Hey guys, Stuart Charles here, HomestudioBasics.com, helping you make sound decisions. So, I got a chance to try out the Fio Q1. I really liked it. There are some things that I did not like about it, but let's get right into the sound. This is a very smooth and neutral type of sound. I came across a forum or a website that uh, display the measurements and all that stuff. Looks very good on paper, and it actually sounds really, really good. Crisp, clean, pretty standard issue stuff here. As far as features go, it's got a gain switch and a bass boost. Volume knob feels really good. You can use it with your phone, so it's got a, it comes with um, a 3.5 millimeter interconnect cable, a lightning cable for your iPhone, and a standard USB cable for your computer. So it functions as a desktop amp DAC and it, as well as one for on the go. So I paired it with my phone. I actually took a trip to the beach with this. It did really well with uh, Tidal and the Tin Audio T2s that I just reviewed, as well as some other headphones. But it doesn't really pair well with higher impedance lower sensitivity headphones. It only outputs around seven milliwatts into 300 ohms, so not very good. It's what really holds it back from being a good recommendation. If you're just a casual listener and you're, you're never gonna upgrade, I would definitely recommend this. If you're an audiophile and you do plan to upgrade, I, I just, I can't recommend it. Even even considering all of the other good things about it. I mean, it's got a good, really good build quality. It's pretty versatile. Comes with two rubber bands for your phone and like I said, three different uh, cable connections as well as a carrying pouch, really nice quality carrying pouch and a rubber foot for your desk. But I couldn't justify spending $100 on this when I could just get uh, a Dragonfly Red and be able to power like higher impedance headphones. Even with the gain switch turned on, I was finding myself having to jack the volume all the way up, even on Corey's Superlux HD330s. Trey told me that Zeus, Zeos, uh, was able to use this with the newer HD6XX or the HD58X, I can't remember which one it was. And I had to look up the specs on that. I could see that being viable. I mean, it's, I think that headphone has a higher sensitivity, so it's, uh, more efficient. With the HD600, I didn't even bother to try it. I mean, you're not gonna get a loud enough volume output, so. Yeah, it's about the size of a deck of cards. It doesn't feel, I mean, it's not a very cheap feeling. It actually feels very solid. A little bit heavier than an E10K. On the front, we've got 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a line out, as well as a direct stream digital or DSD input, which basically means that <coughs> you're gonna get uh, better audio quality. Instead of sampling the information several thousand times a second, it samples it at 2.8 million times a second to generate the audio signal. So for me, 24-bit is perfectly fine. I'll leave a link down below about why, why the bit depth is more important than uh, sample rate. 16-bit only samples about 16,000 unique uh, bits of information, whereas 24 is like, I can't even remember the number. That's basically the difference in audio quality. Some people might tell you differently, but they're lying. And on the back, we have the gain switch, the bass boost, and the micro USB input. Yeah, another issue I had with this is that it's kind of hard to um, switch on and off the gain switch and the bass. It becomes a little bit more time consuming to simply you know if you want some bass to switch it on you gotta especially in the dark if you're listening at night or whatever i don't think it was a good idea to have uh, these on the back especially given that they're very small you can't just sit there and um, reach around to the back and switch it on you've got to turn the amp around put it in your hand and then kind of like switch it that switch it on that way it's, it's just a little bit uh irritating because the gain has to be on all the time anyway i don't think it's a big deal but if you wanted like i just i, I pretty much just leave the gain on full time like i never it's not even powerful enough to leave it off and that's my main concern or my main gripe with this if you want some extra bass it does add a tasteful amount of bass it's not uh over the top which is nice not recommended for audio files recommended if you you have a lot of uh, like if you want to upgrade your sound card from your you know crappy internal one on the on your laptop it's gonna get the job done but don't expect to be able to plug in anything more than even the uh, tin audio t2s at 16 ohm impedance and 104 decibel sensitivity 
I still had to have the gain on and I still was jacking the volume up. So, I don't know, I had a lot of fun with it on the road. I use it a lot with my phone and Tidal and it sounded really good, but would I personally pur ever purchase this? Probably not. Uh, I would just save an extra 100 and go with the Dragonfly. You can plug that into your laptop. You can also use it with an adapter for your phone and it's a lot more convenient and portable. This thing is a little bit, like to get it rigged up with your phone, it's not that difficult, obviously, but it's a little bulkier than I would like. So that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this review. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my growing channel. Let me know what I can do to improve. And with that, check, check one, I two. hope you enjoyed this review, too. It was brought to you by Stu. Who? Me, the lyrical G, empirical dreams slide through like dream. PC gaming, letting off steam. Got bars for days like a prison inmate. A misdemeanor's fate, no debate. When I wake up, okay, start my day with a cup and I pray I don't faint. I'm a saint of the Most High God. Of the Most High God.